Hallelujah. Let's jump into the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I am that I am. The ancient of days. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Good morning, church. It's good to be back after the conference with fresh anointing. Let us come unto the throne to bless the name of our Lord for all that he has done. During the conference, before, and what is about to do in our lives. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit praise his name. Even death could not hold him captive, even in the grave, you are Lord, for death could not hold him captive, even in the grave, you are Lord, oh my soul, magnify the Lord, and my spirit praise His name. Lord, you are excellent. 
land in my life is been so good oh lord you Worship it this morning, Almighty God. And unto you will lift our voice. Be I, sister, lift our voice this morning. Oh, oh, you are the Lamb upon the throne. Oh, you are the Lamb. You are the Lamb upon the throne. The Lamb that died for me. And that for you, you are the land upon the throne. He take away our sins so that we can come before his throne. Hence we are worthy to come before you this morning, Lord. You are the lamb, you are the lamb, you are the lamb.
if truly is worthy of your praise, you will begin to worship Him this morning. You will lift up your voice and say, Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for what you are set to do. Not just in my life, but in the whole of BICC. Oh, we sing, Isaiah, we sing, Isaiah. You are worthy of my Father, for all the situations in our life. Father, we know that you are at work. We know that, Lord, Father, you have blessed us beyond our imagination. Father, we thank you for this. Father, we bless your name. Father, we have gathered here this morning with different needs, different desires. Look down to you, Father, for many things. Father, I ask your mighty God, Father, that, Lord, today, you will meet with our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, your words that we will hear today will touch us in the mighty name of Jesus. For I pray that you connect my heart to your throne to speak your heartbeat in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Um, like we all know, what we are looking at is irresistible life of kingdom impact. But this is my subtopic that I have chosen to share. Sharing life, inspiring hope, and growing people. Before I go into this word, I want to say to every one of us, what I am going to say today is not to criticize anybody. It's not to condemn anyone. Rather, it is to encourage every one of us. We've been talking about impact, doing things for God, working for God. We are doing it. We are there already. We are doing it on, on our own, as a family, as an individual, as a church. But we want to beat our best. We want to do more. And this is why we are saying what I'm going to say today. We thank God for this season that we are in this church and the face that we are at this time. This year we've seen so many words that came for us to be who we are or what we are supposed to be. This is a new dawn where we are here to impart ourselves, our friends, family, and so on and so forth. I am sure that our life will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. From the just concluded BICC International Conference, we had so many opportunities to hear about imparting. And in our uh, Bible, st no, uh, Bible study, yeah, in our Friday service and um, young adult service and so on and so forth, Particularly, I want to say this. Brother, you know, if I live in the same house with you, in the last two days, Friday and today, I would have said that you have uh, stolen my preaching. On Friday, I sat down looking at you, and you were saying all you were saying. That's, that's all I have prepared for now. And today, you came here today, you started again. Ah, I said, 
But you know one thing? When God wants us to hear something, it comes again and again. And in the mouth of two, the truth shall be established. So that is all about it. So thank you very much, sir. God bless you. And Sister Atope, thank you very much for the prayer session. You know, I, I started, I was looking and I said, my God, she started again on those things that I want to touch, but still, it is for our blessing. The more we hear about it, the more we are able to do it. Amen. So, by the grace of God, I will briefly touch on the following things. Uh, attitudes. Um, voluntary to be a worker in the church. Experiences of imparting and serving. Working through, God working through you to impart the church. God worked through others to impart his church. God worked through the church to impart the people. Examples of imparting life. God is with you during life challenges. I pray that I will be able to get to the last bit. Amen. 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 I will cause, I will skip so many things, okay? Now, we talk about salt and light, which is our text, uh, Matthew 5, 13 to, 30 to 16. I will not be able to read it, you know. I mean, it's about, you know, being the salt of the earth and being the light, which is what we are called to be. And this is exactly what we are supposed to be. But I want to look at the 16, verse 16. It says, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I said to myself, this is the meaning of this. It means that God delights in our good work. Someone's life is being blessed and you as the giver, you are happy and you are fulfilled. Amen. These three things comprises all that we are talking about. And if you look at it, you have been doing all these things in one way or the other. So in part in life, as a child of God, how do we do this? It is one thing that we have to desire to be able to impart in someone's life, to be able to be there for someone, to be able to do things that somebody will say, oh, we thank God and we want to do this. And the Bible tells us that we should tell of God's goodness to the generation that is coming. Psalms 78 verse 4 and Psalms 145 verse 4. It tells us that we should commend what we've had, what we have seen to the next generation. And I want to say this, why we are failing in doing this is because of one thing, because of our attitude. It is our attitude that does not make us to tell of God's goodness. Because why? We are angry with people. We are upset. We felt that somebody has offended us. For that reason, you will withhold what you are supposed to do. Amen. There are things that happen, you know, what we are supposed to be doing. How would it have been if every one of us can impart one another. It would be great. If you can do what God has called you to do, to be able to impart somebody, you will be a blessing. I pray all the time. One prayer that I pray all the time now is that God should make me to be a vessel in his hand. That God should help me to bless someone because I have seen God's goodness. Amen. Amen. And so, it shall be your case in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. How glorious would it have been if we can love one another as God has commanded that we should love ourselves and love other people? Love and compassion, they are what should be there to motivate us to be good to people. Amen? Amen. So, attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. People may hear you, but they feel your attitude. They feel your attitude. At times you say something that is good, but your, your what do you call it, your reaction or your body language, yeah. What you said and what you just done does not match together. Amen. Our attitude is our prize 
a test of our value. If someone has got bad attitude, it means they have very low value. Good attitude, high value. Amen. So, attitude causes us, when it's not right, we become timid in imparting our family, our life, even our own lives, our community, and our church. So the Bible encourages us that we should tell of God's wondrous acts in the, to the generation that is coming. And when you help somebody, you become connected. You become happy, fulfilled, and your life becomes a meaning. If in the household of God, there's so many vacancies. In the church of God, is the only place on earth where there are vacancies. You can't apply for a job and somebody says to you that, oh, sorry, um, there's no, you can't be shifted or drafted to somebody, to somewhere else, but always there are vacancies in the church of God. So if today you feel touched with all that you have had in the last week that you want to be a blessing, you want to work for God, please see me at the end of the service or any of the pastors, and then we will talk about it and we will move on. I pray that God will touch us as we do this. We have a duty to one another, duty to move ourselves from one level to another level, move ourselves from members to disciples, move ourselves to being partners in the church and to leaders. The message I am talking about today is really not for it's for the younger generation that are coming. Unfortunately, most of them are not here today. You see, in this church, many things have happened in time past. Many things. We've imparted or came up with different ideas, different things to be a blessing to one another. And I will tell you some of it. Although young people, I am not that young to do certain things anymore, but count me in. I can support you and I can be of help if you really need it. Uh, those of us that have been here for many years, I mean, I can see some faces here. Um, we've done so many things in this church. For example, computer school. The need came at that time that it was the thing in vogue. And many of us came from Africa. We haven't got access to those things. Even people who went to universities, top universities in Nigeria, they never saw computer before they came to this country. So I took the initiative that, oh, first of all, let us start computer school because I studied computer studies in this country. So it gave me the inclination. So we started start computer. We did it. Even if it's only one person that was blessed, I am sure that God will count it worthy for us. Football club. Music classes and music school. First of all, you can remember all those things I'm talking about. <laughs> Saturday school, summer school, career talk, health awareness Sunday, medical workshop, sports day. And please help me complete the list, those of us that are here, okay? Yes, I understood that the world has involved, things have happened, people, uh, things are going to happen. But Something is still lacking. We're still lacking. Spirituality is one thing that is in the church that we can never take out of the church. But it is these social things that bond us together. Amen. I was just going to say something. You know, Please don't be offended if this affects you, okay? Call a party and come and see our people the way they express themselves in freedom. And I want to say this, okay? In parting, apart from Paul, my son, and my wife, 
every other person that I've come in contact with is members of this church. Because we brought Paul into this church and we had Tony in this church. So every other person that I know here today, I know you through the church. And many people have blessed me. Many people have blessed me. They stood. And that is what we are talking about in parting into someone's life. So being a member of a church, you gain a lot and you contribute a lot. So what you have gained, don't keep to yourself. I had the opportunity to work in the church for many years and I saw how our pastor was doing. And I said to myself, I want to walk in the shoes of this man. Praise the Lord. There's nothing that you bring to pastor that will not look at. Pastor has stood for many of us to get loan in his own name for us. The, the, the first house that I bought in this country, it was pastor that went to the house. He wanted to buy it. And he came back and he said to me, he said, I saw this house, you know, I wanted to buy it, but there's another one on top of the, on top of the first floor. You buy this one, and I will go and buy the other one. To be honest, till I pay for the other, I never saw it. Pastor done everything. So how or not would I want to impart someone's life? When I was going to the business about 10 years ago, there's a lady in this church. I walked up to her, and I said to her, I said, God asked me to come to you that you have been doing this business, I want to do this business. When I prayed, God told me that I should go to her. And I told her, God said I should come to you. She told me everything about his business. And up to today, over 10 years, I'm still using the same people that he introduced me to. Many people have packed up business in Nigeria because they stole their money, because people ran away with them. I've never had that in my life. So this is what I gained from the church that I'm trying to portray to you. And this is what you are, that you are doing. Amen. Amen. Unfortunately, I mentioned pastor, but so many people that I have to mention, you know, but unfortunately, there's no time to, 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 to do this one. Okay. Now, let us go to the, uh, the experiences of imparting. When you are prepared to impart and serve, it allows you to see miracle of God. In Bradion said this as well, you know, that's when I said that you look at my book. Um, John 2, when Jesus went to uh, the wedding and there was no more wine, and he asked the uh, servants to fill the pot. Okay, when they served the water to, because to the servant it was water, yeah? They knew that it was water they put in the pot. When they served it to the guest, and the guest added, and this is a very good wine. So the servants now knew that something has happened that turned water they put there into wine. And the people who had it never knew, they didn't know what happened behind the scene. So it was the servants that saw miracles. So when we are working for God, we see miracles in our life. Praise the Lord. Working for God and allowing yourself to become God's servant, you will experience peace and joy. It comes from obedience because you've obeyed God's work that you are going to be a blessing to someone. Look, I said this, please don't look at me as if I'm speaking or I'm talking to you. I know you do it in different aspects of life. Many of you here, you pay school fees in Nigeria. You look after your brothers and your sisters' children. You look after all those things. All those things are blessing. Okay, please keep it up. Continue to don't allow the devil to tell you that you are not imparting someone's life. No, it's a lie. You are doing it. See, when you do good, I don't know about you. When I bless someone and I see their smile, I feel happy that I can put smile in someone's face. 
And I bet you, I tell you, there's no way you do somebody any good that they will be. When they are collecting that good from you, they will not think about any harm. It may be later, but at, at that spot that you are saying, even they are saying thank you, it doesn't come from their thank you, it's from their heart. Because they know that you have blessed them. Amen. Okay. When you help somebody and you impart life, it helps you to become more like Jesus. Because this is what Jesus came for. He died for us. He liberated us. He done so many things for us. So that we'll be able to be like him. And I'm sure that this is what we are supposed to be doing. And God will help us to be able to do this. Amen. Hebrews 10, 24, 25 says, He instructs us to spur one another onward towards love and goodness. Not, give, not giving up in our meeting together. Amen. When you impart life and you, serve, and you are prepared to serve, it increases your, your faith. When you leave your comfort zone to help somebody, okay, it increases your faith. And look, put it this way. When you give everything that you can give, God will refill you back. God will take you from where you are and will give you more because that is you are doing his heartbeat. You know, when we stop to do good to somebody, or when we refuse to do good, when somebody needs help and we know he needs help and we refuse to do it, we are depriving of that person of God's love. We are trying to say, okay, that's it. I received the love, full stop. It's not going anywhere. And that is not what we are supposed to be doing. We are supposed to transfer it. When you transfer, you get more. When you plant, when you sow, you sow. We don't sow big yam to get that big tuba. It's just very small thing. Corn, you fall, goes into the ground, and you get so many uh, cups coming up. So it's those little things that you do. Not big things. I, I used to tell people I may not be able to give one million naira, but I know that I can afford 1,000 naira. If I give to you, uh, my wife will love her. When I say this, my wife will love her. I have um, somebody. She says to me one day, she's my brother's brother, and she says to me that, uh, brother, your own is always 5,000. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She said, oh, you, all, brother, your own is always about 5,000. Why? Because I give her 5,000. Every time I see her, I give her 5,000. Even if I see her three times in a day, I give her 5,000. But I said to her one day, I said, do you know how many people I give 5,000 to? Do you know? I give to so many people, so I might have spent 100,000. But to you, 5,000 came to you. You know, praise the Lord. So I never feel bad. It never discouraged me. When I see her tomorrow, I still give her 5,000. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we have to show kindness in everything that we do, in our doing, in our speech, in everything. There must be elements of kindness. And I pray that the Almighty God will take us there in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God. Time is going. Okay, let us look at this one, okay? How you can inspire somebody. You know, your life is a testimony. I can give my life as a testimony from where I was coming from. You know, I came to this church. Okay, uh, I came to this country. I think I've told you before. I came to this country with 10 pounds in my pocket. Only 10 pounds, nothing more. And um, I, I was wearing what I thought was the best that you could wear from Nigeria to come to the UK. My wife, she was the one who gave me a uh, sweater. She bought the sweater and said, it's cold. I don't, I don't even know if it's cold. I was wearing a um, native. You know what my parents said to me when I came to this country? They said, you, you came in um, pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. When I see him, I say, so you remember I came in pajamas. Okay? You know, but what I'm saying is that today is a different story. I came to this church, I have... I mean, there's so many problems that I was going through, you know, 
I will say this, okay? The person is here. When I entered this, I came to the first conference in Baganza, Baganza, Kennington. Uh, on the last day of the conference, then the, the speaker, I think it was Gio, he said that we should help to clear the, 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 the floor. A sister, she was holding a brush, and I went to her, and I said, oh, don't worry, sister, let me, give me the brush, let me sweep. You know what she said to me? She said to me, she said, do not take, do not rob me of my blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. I feel she, 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 she can't remember that anymore now. But what, after that, I, I, I felt like, what, why did she say this one? So I got him, I told my wife, my what I'm talking about. I told her, I said, this is what this person said to me. But that never discouraged me, you know. Never, never get discouraged because you are not doing for man. God saw my heart as at that time, and God has accepted my offering to do it. The following Sunday, Pastor may not remember this one, I came to church in um, Wendover. There was service, because I was coming from African background, where you carry your hymn book and you read your hymn, you know, so they were singing, I was looking at them, the way they were singing, I couldn't contribute, I don't even know the words, and so on and so forth. So I went up after service, I went to pastor, I said, pastor, I saw that we are doing what we are doing. Please, can you just write those book, those songs for me? I will type them up, bind them, and then we will use them. Pastor, remember that one? Pastor said to me, okay. He never said no, he never said yes. He said, yeah, he said, okay, we will do something about it. Okay, but this is my point. If you are wired to be an instrument, wherever you are, you will find something to do. You will not allow any discouragement to stop you to do it. Human beings are there to discourage you. People will even look at you and then say, oh, how come you came to this church, you know, um, and within a few years you became a pastor, you became this, you became that. You know, when pastor told me that he wants to make me a pastor, and I said to him, I said, pastor, no way, sir. We fought in that office. I said, pastor, no way. Pastor said, look, I said, pastor, tell me exactly what I am doing that you think that I am worthy to be a pastor. And he said to me, he said, you are doing so many things that you never realized we are pastor's job. Look. I have left people's home 3 a.m. in the morning to go and sort out husband and wife quarrel. 2 a.m. and I'll be driving maybe about 18 miles to my house. I'll just be going, you know. But I never felt anything. I felt that I have blessed someone. And when I see them today, I thank God for their life. And I know that God has used me as an instrument. So, and I believe that they themselves, receiving that, they will want to do it for somebody else. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. No time. But I will leave you with this one. I have to say this one. Um, sorry, uh, our people, they say I should not be saying that, but I will say it now. I've said it now. There's this story about how God works in our life. It's in a book that says the poem. Footprints in the sand. This person was trying to demonstrate what God is in our life. And he said that, you look at his life, when things were bad, when things were good, and he said to himself that, when things were good, he saw on the sand two footprints, two sets of footprints, one of him and the other one of God. And he said when things became very bad, seriously, he only saw one set of footprints. And he asked God, why did you forsake me at this time that I needed you? And God said, when you couldn't see the footprint, it was when I carried you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That shows us that whatever that we are going through, God is there with us. And God will see us through in every situation of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
you will see the blessings of God. You will see the grace of God. God will grant you all that is needed to be a blessing. Look, brothers and sisters, it's not about money, and it's about money. Amen. Amen. It's not about money, and it's about money. If you need 50 pounds and about five people contribute, you're going to get how many? 50 pounds. But it won't be coming from one person. This is where teamwork does matter. We can achieve anything as a team. But ask me to give you 1,000 pounds. I will look at you and say, oh, you must be joking. Amen. But if we say you give you 10 pounds, oh, quickly, oh, all right, that's cool, man. You know, so that is how life is all about. You know, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I wish I had more time. I would have said so many things, but let me just stop here. I use pastor as an example because Brother Leon used pastor as an example on Friday. Amen. You know, and it is a challenge for us that those things that you have got. Look, everyone in this church has seen blessings from somebody else. Even when people cook rice for you, when they cook for you, uh, when a sister makes salads for you, and you pay 25 pounds, it's not that 25 pounds that matters. She will give to you more than what you paid. That is advantage that you get, and that is imparting your life, showing you good, that you have to show to somebody else. Amen. Shall we rise? We have only three prayer points this morning. Number one, we are going to ask God to come into our life. Let us begin to appreciate the name of the Almighty God for the situation in our life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, Father, for who you are, for all that you have done, for your blessings in our life. We thank you, Father, for the situation that we are in our life at this time. We ask Almighty God, Father, that, Lord, you will take to control, you will lead us, and, Lord, you will guide us, you will show us the way in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we will see you anew in our situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Your blessing will be upon us in every area of our life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Pray that the Lord our Savior will see, will make you a blessing relevant in the life of people, the church and the community. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that you will make us to be a blessing that is relevant in the life of people, in the church, and in our community, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, I pray, Father, that every area of my life, Father, Lord God, that I will be a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. But Lord Jehovah, I'll be relevant in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, we are going to pray that Lord give you all the resources that you need to impart the life of other people. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Lord Father, this morning, that Lord Jehovah, you will help me, Lord Father. You will give to me, Lord Father, all the resources that I need to make an impact in someone's life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Almighty God, Father, that Lord, you will lead me, and Lord, you will guide me, you will show me the way in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Ask Pastor, can you please pray for us, please?